Yes, indeed. What's up, world? Welcome What's to happening? edition on Black Power Media BPM Live Special. Good morning, brother Kalanji. What's hey. good? Uh, of course, my name is Jared Ball. Happy to be co-hosting with our comrade here, uh, brother Kalanji, as we are uh, just say uh, a, a goodbye and a temporary. We'll see you next year to Black August. Okay. Uh, and and shout out to 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 you, Kalanji, and and BPM and us in general for holding Black August down as best we could all month. Uh, and we encourage that people continue that that uh, keep that same energy, as they yes. say. Yes, uh, feels good. Feels good. Yeah, rejuvenation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yes. exactly. And of course, we are holding it down uh, until the Remix Morning Show resumes next week. Uh, we are we are uh, uh, endeavoring to continue to bring you your boom bat breakfast. Uh, and again, the Remix will be back uh, uh, in full flow next week. Of course, my show Friday will be back uh, and Monday and then we'll be back full strength boom bat breakfast uh, reconvened, reconstituted next week. So but started off right. We gotta, yeah, we got a, a pun intended. Yes. <laughs> you like that. Huh? I like yeah, that. I like style. that. Yes. So, yes. So we got word. My man, Dr. Todd Stephen Burroughs, was in touch with Dr. Johanna Fernandez and our next guest uh, in some email exchanges and uh, wanting to see if we at BPM could help extend the conversation that I know that, that uh, our next guest has been having and had with Dr. Fernandez at WBAI uh, the other morning. And uh, uh, we said, absolutely, because of course, we're talking about uh, in some, you know, uh, black literary royalty, uh, Not a doubt. you know. Not a doubt, Not a doubt. <laughs> I, I mean, if I, if I can, if, I don't even know if black literary royalty is even <laughs> proper. You know what I'm saying? Because right in fact, okay. we're talking about like a, a progenitor in, sure. in, in in black thought. You know what I mean? Right. Someone who Amiri Baraka stated was uh, one of the reasons that he was drawn towards uh, standing up for our people. You know what I'm saying? Right. Amiri said that, then that, that's that's heavy. And you know and I mean? as I heard her discuss, we can ask her about uh, Richard Wright's uh, work. Black boy is still uh, apparently, you know, required re was required reading among the uh, Panthers, and is still uh, widely distributed among prisons. Yes. Uh, and that's also something we know we wanted to talk with her about this morning because she's been doing a lot of work uh, around uh, um, a recent United Nations uh, special rapporteur. Uh, uh, commission report on not only the abuses in general here in the United States suffered by so-called people of color, but specifically political prisoners and most specifically Mumia Abu-Jamal uh, and his treatment up there, uh, uh, up the road from where I am, at least in Pennsylvania. So uh, we're very, and of course, by the way, she's also shepherded uh, the publication of uh, the the uh, previously written uh, and just recently completed and published um, uh, book from Richard Wright, The Man Who Lived Underground. So we're going to be able to talk with her about that and why that book wasn't published. Uh, and it looks like she's ready now. So let's go ahead and bring, of course, we're talking about Mama Julia Wright, uh, okay. who is uh joining us this morning thankfully and we appreciate you good morning mama julia good to see you hope Greetings. you can hear us okay can you hear me yeah it's yeah. a little low uh but we okay. do hear you i'll speak oh okay thank you okay. for inviting me and you know what i am dedicating this is so unexpected and wonderful i'm dedicating whatever i'm going to say to the Martinsville Seven, who yesterday were granted a posthumous pardon, mm -hmm. 70 years later, um, by the governor of Virginia. They are now recognized 70 years later as innocent for the collective race. Uh oh, I think we we I think she froze there a little bit. 
Yeah. All right. So we're going to let's see if we can get uh, Mama Julia's connection tightened up there a little bit. But what she's talking about here is the uh, um, and I think I think uh, Julia, we just lost your connection was a little bit shaky there. We lost you for a second. Um, so I was just trying to show uh, the, the story of uh, what you were talking about there. But please continue. Yeah. Martinsville seven. OK. And the reason why I am so bowled over is that my father is smiling because in Paris, he had founded the Franco-American Fellowship uh, and had championed these seven men and had claimed their innocence on the international platform uh, alongside people like Jean-Paul Sartre and of course, Jimmy Baldwin and others. Yes, yes. So, right on. You know, only you can say Jimmy Baldwin. You know what I'm saying? For for folks my age and younger, that's James Baldwin and put some respect on his name. But you can say Jimmy Baldwin when you're when you Mama Julia right, right on. And and in fact, that's actually one of the questions I had. I, I, I was hoping we could work in at some point. I don't know if, if, if uh, I think she's frozen again. Uh, let's see if we yes. can get, because, let's see if we can get that straight. Because uh, in, a, in an interview, I was trying to get ready for today real quick. And in an interview she gave recently, she was, she's, she was teasing out what she has to say about her relationship to uh, James Baldwin. And uh, uh, I would like very much to uh, hear her talk a little bit about that. And maybe we can get an extended tease on that because she's saving it for her memoirs, apparently. Uh, okay. But to your point, uh, when you talk about somebody who might have a particular relationship, we just lost you there for a few minutes because uh, you froze up. So, I, But but we, we were just saying... Uh, Kalanji was just saying, you know, only you could could you know have have the ability to refer to James Baldwin as Jimmy, and I was saying that I had heard you talk in a recent interview about what you're saving for your memoir regarding your uh, particular relationship with James Baldwin, uh, but I thought maybe we could we could get you to give us an extended tease on that since it came up uh, earlier in the conversation, uh, um, that that maybe I was expecting, but but. Uh, there's so many other things we could get to, one of which is, of course, it's consistent that your father was talking about uh, uh, wrongfully imprisoned and you're continuing that work as well. So we definitely want to hear about that. But while we're here, I'm, I'm happy to take that that detour real quick. If you want to share anything about your what, what would be forthcoming in your memoir about your experience with James Baldwin. OK, OK. Um, oh, just a little. Little thing. Um when I heard he was dying, I went down to St. Paul de Vence uh, to meet him before he transitioned and to ask him a question. And uh, I know I'm a journalist, but this was beyond a journalist question. This was existential and it was also to do with my father. So it was way past journalism. And the question I asked him, if I remember correctly, because it was a long time ago, was, Jimmy, did they consider my father and you as two black stars they had to divide in order to conquer. Mm. And he was in mm. pain and his, his face was partly in shadow. So I couldn't really make out his expression. And so I waited for his response. And then I could see him smile. In spite of the pain, he died a few days later. Uh, and he said, Julia, yes. Mm. 
because you did talk a little bit about how he he you know at one point was very fond of your father then at one point not so fond and 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 this is this is what you you were driving to get at a little bit some background on what what occurred there is that is that what i understand to be the case the the chapter in progress is going to be called shades of jimmy Hmm. because he goes through various stages Yeah. yeah sure sure so that's that's for Jimmy, but we're allowed to change. People are allowed to change. Sure. I know. I mean, you, you mentioned the, the Martinsville seven, um, that being significant as far as yesterday. Also in a few days um, would be your father's birthday. Is that correct? Like three days from now? It's going to be, yeah, on the 4th of September. Right, 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 right. So that, yeah. Okay, okay. So that... that Uh, okay. is she... I think she's froze again. Okay. All right. Well, let's. Uh, okay, we'll try to we we'll try to get her back on again here in just a second. Uh, but, she's out but, the country, correct? Is she back here, or I'm honestly not entirely sure. Uh, okay. So, okay. so uh, you know, that's a good question. That might be the case. Uh, but uh, you know, even that little tidbit there is pretty deep. Um, uh-huh. That that, uh, and I think we I think we got her back. We just we just had you frozen there for a second. Um, yeah. Uh, and I wasn't sure if we had cut you off or you were attempting to say a little bit more in re- in relation to your father's birthday. Uh, um, nothing else except that I'll be putting out a, a Richard Wright bulletin uh, with news about what's happened since uh, George Floyd's uh, lynching and. I will speak to a project that is current and that is very moving to me, profoundly moving to me. And that is the projected homecoming. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. Uh Uh-oh. The projected homecoming. We could, we could, we could speculate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, yes. Or what, what or who she might be talking about, but uh, um, so many ways. Um, I, well, I want to well, say, yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Good. I, I was just going to say for the viewers. I mean, this is um, this is a a powerful moment right now for BPM because of the fact that um, you know just what uh, what we plan on getting from her in regards to this, this new book and, and just the, uh, just the, the historical importance of a Richard Wright. You know what I mean? Someone who, like you said, for us coming up, his works were required reading in school. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it, um, uh, his film, so on and so forth, you know, for it to be coming out in the the forties, I mean, that that's powerful. You know, it's a real, real powerful thing. Yeah. And 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 to this day, uh, um, you know, I know others have their favorites and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I, um, uh, to this day, uh, The Outsider stands as as one of uh, my favorite books. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, you know, and, and, and for, for reasons I admit are not always properly noble, I think about uh, Cross Damon all the time uh you know uh particularly the 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 beginning where he takes advantage of that train wreck and di- and dips <laughs> no doubt no doubt no doubt <laughs> how like, many times have i thought man <laughs> <laughs> you, you you're telling on yourself dr ball it's i'm probably. telling on myself i'm like man i might dip i might take advantage of this moment and dip and and make some things right in the world but anyway yes. uh uh Uh, We were just vamping a little bit while we were waiting for you to come back, Mama Julia. Um, You know, one of the things that I wanted to be sure to 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 bring up because you were talking about, uh, 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 and please continue if you like. I'm not exactly sure where you left off, but uh, you were you know talking about the the, your father and his work and the connection to uh, uh, you know not only the broader struggle. But it's something that you've continued doing yourself, and I and I wanted to make sure we we got to to at least some of the you know the the 
uh, I guess the, the the crux of the matter here. I know that you you were uh, um, talking about an announcement that you were preparing for around your father's birthday uh, and the the hopeful. We we got caught. That's where we got caught off around the the the, the hopeful potential good news or. Uh, and I, so maybe we could pick up there and then transition into some of the work that, that we know you wanted to, to focus on this morning. Right. Um, uh, uh, this is the year 2021 where following the commemoration of uh, the Tulsa massacre, uh, attention has been paid to other hidden massacres, so-called hidden <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, buried massacre, uh, yeah. massacres uh, in what we call white silence. Yeah. And I'd love to come back to that theme of silence later, because I think silence is very pervasive in our culture. Yeah. Um, and yeah. there has been a project coming both from a center in Elaine, Arkansas, called the Elaine Legacy Center, and also from, I believe, I hope, uh, Brian Stevenson's uh, memorial uh, and uh, uh, equal justice initiative um to do uh what they call a homecomings uh commemoration of those thousands legions of lynched who are unnamed amongst which of course uh my great uncle silas hoskins uh, uh richard's favorite uncle and oh my goodness, this is so moving uh, because my father never spoke to me about that lynching. And I only discovered it on not my first reading of Black Boy, not my second reading of Black Boy, but maybe my seventh or eighth reading of Black Boy. So great was the power of denial in me, his daughter, about that chapter two, where the <laughs> Richard remembers how he was eight years old and he didn't really know what lynching was all about because he hadn't really been told. But all he knew is that his favorite uncle, the uncle who brought food to the table for the first time, had been suddenly one night plucked from their midst. There was no funeral, no flowers, no songs, just fear and flight. And then of course, he says, I don't know why I say, of course, it wasn't, of course, they were all scared to death. But my father, uh, even as a child, is brave enough to ask his mother, but why had we not fought back? And his mother was so scared, she slapped him into silence. Hmm. And that silence, when I read Black Boy so, so much later, I believe that was the word that leapt up to me from the page, that word silence, that was imposed on my father by his mother out of fear and how the realization that my father must have become a writer because of that, because he needed to break that silence in order to exist. 
in order to become a man? Uh, in order to make sense in this world. Wow. Um, in a strange way, unfortunately, oh, here we go. Oh, good. Back. No, you're okay. right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, in a strange way, uh, what I will tell you later about the United Nations document that has just come through will also get back to the question of silence. Absolutely. Uh, there's so many questions. I mean, so before, just to make sure before, before I forget, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but definitely before I forget, I want to make sure that to ask at least, uh, having not read it, uh, at this point, uh, where does this, this, uh, previously unpublished novel that you've helped shepherd through, at least as I've described it, please correct that description if necessary. Uh, the man who lived underground, uh, that is just now being, uh, coming out from, from your father, uh, uh, with your, uh, if I understand it correctly, uh, heavy involvement and help. Uh, where does that book fit in with this 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 concept of breaking silence? Uh, and maybe talk a little bit about how it was itself silenced. <laughs> yes, like those Russian dogs, all nested one in the other. A silence and silence and silence. You know, how do mm. we merge after that? And that's the theme of the invisible. Um, yeah, um, you know, I kept going back to the States from Paris after the 80s uh, to visit Mumia in prison on Beth Row. And uh, on my way to Pennsylvania, I would go through cities like New York uh, and other places. And uh, during those years, I was hit hard by the news of uh, street executions, you know. Um, I, I, the names, I mean, the, the list of names is too long. Abner, so, Abner Luima and... Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, how would we? I mean, with Sean Bell, uh, you know, Amadou uh, Diallo, Amadou yes. Diallo, yeah. you know, uh, and down yeah. south in mm. Texas, was it? Uh, Bird, uh, James Bird, Bird. James yeah. Bird. That's right. James Bird. Helped, 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 and, helped his 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 white friend pave his driveway and got dragged down the street and, and decapitated for it. But yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, uh, that red just occurred. So by the time it was time to, oh, I got lost again. You're, you're here now. It's it's in and out. It's in and out. We'll, we'll wake our way through. Uh oh. All right, let's let me let her get caught back up. Uh, uh, it, it's it's almost fitting that that as we try to recite some of the names, try to remember all the names that 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 you know things freeze up and we get caught up. Uh, Listen, yeah, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. I mean, from what I what I've um, the little bit that I've read on this book, it, it's it's um, it, when you talk about fitting. You know, you're talking about a something that, like you said, they tried to silence back in the 40s. I think mm -hmm. that book probably I think he tried to get that out maybe about eight, nine years after uh, after um, Native Son, Native Son, I mean, yeah. at least after, after the film. Matter of fact, I think that it was before the film, but after the book. OK, yeah. so. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I've only heard her talk about it elsewhere a little bit. Uh, what went on, and I'm I'm hoping we can get her back to, to tell that story here because right it's uh, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, it looks like she's yeah. endeavoring to make her way back. Yeah, we are gonna push uh, this one along, folks. The same. Oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna make yeah. it happen. This, this, yeah. We're all good. It's all good. No rush. It's all good. Welcome back. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Yes. Are, are you in the states or? No, I'm way across the pond. 
Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. In the Ooh. place uh -oh. where the new variant, one of the countries where C12 is born. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So wow. now, okay, great. <laughs> having registered the horror of those street executions, it, the time came. Oh, oh, yeah. We, we, can, we can hear you. <laughs> we can hear you. Yeah. You're good. We still got, still have you. Uh oh. Maybe not. Can you hear me? We hear yes. You Keep, go ahead. Oh, yep. Good. Maybe. Can you hear me now? Yes. now? Yes. 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 What if I stopped? If you stop the video, if that's what you... Yeah, we, uh, we, we can hear you. You may, um, yeah, we, we see you again. What, uh, Jared? Yep, yep. We, we, yeah, I was wondering, I think uh, you're frozen again, but I think you were endeavoring to say that if you turned off your camera, um, maybe that would help. And I'm I'm happy to have that, you know. Have you have you try that if if you're uh, when she gets back. Right, so right, we'll right. keep we'll keep trying. But uh, um, uh, the one thing that I wanted to ask her about that that is a connection here is that these these street killings and the lynching. That okay, there we go. Yes. Were you, were, yeah, go ahead if you okay. if you can hear us. I think we're we're yeah. set again. When the time came to publish another Richard Wright book. And I went to Yale uh, to the Bainaka archives where his unpublished manuscripts are um, housed. Uh, on mind, really, I was just looking through the manuscripts and the uh, I'm lost again. We hear you. No, we, still here. we hear you. You're still here. You're still with us. If I stop the camera, would you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. And we also still see you, but. Hello. Can you Sorry. hear me now? Yes. Yes, we hear you. Why do I feel like you stopped the audio and not the camera? <laughs> but but I think uh man. Let's Can see you if she this, okay. nah, she she disconnected. Um uh, but anyway, the one thing I was going to, I hope we can get the chance to ask her about is, you know, when James Cone used to talk about how the cross is the lynching tree and the ghetto is the lynching tree. And, you know, you can't understand lynching unless you understand uh, the overall condition of black people. Uh, that's yeah. something I, I, you know, but anyway, I think we have you back. Um, and if you do want to try uh, uh, turning off your camera, may, if that will help, uh, we're, we're happy to try that because we can still hear you if your if your camera's off. Okay. Maybe um, that will help. Okay. We'll give it a shot. Tell me, tell me if when you stop hearing me. Okay. Uh, so I was just sifting through the manuscripts, and then something strange happened because here was the man who lived underground, but it was a very long manuscript, and what I remembered was that the man who lived underground was just a short story. So mm. what was this extremely heavy manuscript doing in the archives? Uh, and, and it was a bit like being a detective in a very interesting mystery story. So I looked and discovered that what had been weeded out of the short story, not to say censored, was the 50 original first page. Uh-oh. 
on police brutality, the forced confession out of Fred Daniels. Can you still hear me? Yes, yes you broke up there just a little bit uh, at the Can beginning you? of the police brutality, but we hear you, yeah. Okay. Um, so the initial... Oh. We hear you. Uh oh, we hear you. Maybe not. We did. We did hear you. Mm hmm. All right. Well, let's. We'll keep struggling with her. <laughs> we'll hopefully, that, that, yeah. we, uh, piece it together. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, because I know she was starting to talk about the the. Uh, uh, finding in the extended manuscript references to police violence uh, and um, uh, I, I believe was attempted to connect the the themes. Um, one thing that, that I just want to make sure we at least mention uh, just in case this 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 you know we can't get this back together uh, is that um, want to encourage people to to and we'll find the link and, and post it but the the UN Human Rights Commission has uh, recently published uh, uh, their statement uh, and I have not seen it I have to admit I could I didn't have a chance to find it before today but um, uh, the statement that 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 is uh, um, in response to the conditions, uh, among others, but at least the, not the least of which Mumia Abu Jamal, and have uh, spoken directly to his ill treatment in the prison system, and uh, uh, you know have come out uh, in support of of that improved. You know that be improved, but but uh, Mama Julia, we, we have you back if you want to try to continue. Um, you, you look yeah. brand new now, so this might work. <laughs> okay, so um, where was I? Yes, um, the manuscript and the police brutality in the extended manuscript uh, yeah. that you found. Nineteen forty-two, mm -hmm. by the way, the year of my birth. So I'm the twin of that book. Uh, mm -hmm. They had. When I say they, I mean the white editors, of course, had uh, said, we'll publish, basically, if you cut out Richard, they, they don't say Mr. Wright, they say Richard, um, mm -hmm. the, 51st, the 51st pages on police brutality, which essentially describe the forced confession uh, being uh, drawn out of Fred Daniels via police torture. Now, coming back to silence, the theme of silence and silencing, this is so powerful, getting it out in 2021, the whole book, because it coincided not only with uh, this young girl's ability to film the lynching of George Floyd. She filmed the end of his life, hmm. giving us the narrative of his torture. She ended that censorship, which we're all doing today when we film with our cell phones, when we bear witness to the torture of those who are killed in the streets. She, at 17 years old, bore witness to a narrative which was not supposed to surface. Just as my father's description of police torture was not supposed to surface in 1942. So that. 
that and is that what kept the book? Was that the singular issue that kept the book from publication? The whole book? Yes. Absolutely. Mm. I do believe that. And I'm not the only one. I, I, do, I do believe that. So I thank Library of America for bringing it out. Um, and um, at this time, with the Derek Chauvin syndrome, because I call it a syndrome, it's not over, far from it. Sure. Uh, like the virus, it's only mutating. Um, mm. uh, uh, it's, it's very necessary to break the silence. All these silences we're surrounded with. And we'll come to this other silence that we'll speak about in a minute, connected with the United Nations. This is, this um, is a mi- oh, sorry. This is such an amazing thing because of the fact that here we are. This book was literally written almost 80 years to date. You know what I mean? It's like 79 going on 80 years, 1942. And the same issues. And you, it seems like you went into, uh, you went to Yale. I'm, I'm from Connecticut, by the way. So, you know, I know all the the, 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 the stolen uh, materials that Yale houses. And it's like you went inside this burial ground and you resurrected, you know what I mean? You resurrected the, this, this important piece that is, uh, that seems to be more relevant today than even back then. So it's almost like prophecy to, to, a, to a degree, not to, you know, uh, be sacrilegious or engage in any type of spookism. I'm just saying, it seems like, you you went in there and you 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 brought it out. I mean, how when 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 did you start that particular process? Because of the fact that I mean, it, it's like divine decree. When when did how long did it take for this? Uh, you know, from beginning to end, as far as uh, publishing this this latest book. Uh, uh, I uncovered the manuscript. Yeah, I love yes that comparison with digging up from a ground that is not so sacred. That's right. Uh, uh, that was in 2010, and it took over 10 years. Wow. Wow. And the trigger was George Floyd. That's when I went back and said, we got to do it. We got to do it. And we did it. Um, I don't discount all the resistance still out there against this type of narrative. Um, <laughs> it's maybe even stronger than ever. Um, and uh, we'll talk about all these silences. I mean, we're talking about massacres, hidden massacres. Uh, I was reading about the use of silence in, the, in, in committing massacres. Massacres, the hidden massacres, need silence. That's their fertilizer. Hmm. Well, was it, Dr. King says silence is betrayal at a certain point, or I don't know if he was, you know, quoting someone else or yeah oh that's absolutely true yeah. i was quoting that only the other day yep mm. Mm. right on so so well let's get to that a little bit the the this the silence that was uh, attempting yeah. well the attempt to unearth some of the silence around uh mumia uh political prisoners uh what's happening particularly in pennsylvania uh, and, and tell us about this UN report and where we can get it. Uh, um, I, I admit I just uh, didn't have the time to, to run and look for it, but uh, I would like to, to read it. I've heard you describe it uh, on, on uh, Dr. Fernandez's program this week, uh, but I'm definitely interested in, in having uh, our audience hear about it as well and, and myself more. So so um, please, if you would, uh, introduce uh, that that. Uh, uh, work. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it may not be a historical document, but it's a document that comes from our 
history. Um, and from the fact that our Black history uh, shows that our luminaries like Du Bois, uh, Paul Rodson, Malcolm X, William Patterson, all made a point of approaching the UN. So why not okay. us? You know, um, I mean, some of those texts, like We Charge Genocide, are now studied as political education. Um, also, I strongly believe that if Mm. UN is conservative, then shouldn't I just we... want... Oh, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, you froze there for a second. You were saying if the if the UN is conservative, we should something. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Me and Gina. Uh, I think she froze up again. Um, but I think she's raising a very important point. Uh, one that I know has come into conflict in some of the the, the more modern hashtag debates. Uh, that where where some more conservative elements want to to um, withdraw us from the international stage. There is this tradition of bringing the black struggle here in the United States to that international stage. And uh, I think it's an important history. So Mama Julia, you were just telling us about uh, something about the tradition of bringing the plight of black Americans to the United Nations. And uh, you were saying something about if it's, if it is a conservative body, something, uh, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, I, I do understand those who consider that the United Nations are a conservative body. Uh, but then I would counter that we should, as freedom fighters, fight conservatism wherever it is. If it's in the UN, we should fight it in the UN. But that means, how do I say, uh, having something to do with them. So that was part of my approach to them. Um, then here, here is a wonderful little story. I think I'm going to read it to you because I want you to get it. Trump left the UN in a tantrum, banging the door behind him. During the Trumpless years, and in spite of allies like Israel standing in for him, states friendly to us, like Venezuela and others, quietly filled the vacuum left by the US. We don't have much time because Biden is biding his time. But there is still a narrow window for us to claim the benefits of what our mostly African friends did for us in Trump's absence. Why not seize the time? That is the motivation for our going to the UN for our elders who are trapped in our dungeons and dying because Delta is going to have no pity for them, not in the hands of our pitiless imperialist power structure. Uh, the guards and I'm looking at Pennsylvania, are between 77 and 83% unvaccinated. 
because they're free to be so. Whereas, and that also goes for masks, they can go, come and go as they please without masks, unvaccinated. Whereas our prisoners, the ones we're fighting for, are mostly vaccinated. Why? And that's a big question. Why? Because they are punished if they refuse. And they're punished with solitary confinement. So that's interesting. So you're saying that the prisoners are punished with vaccination by have, being forced to be vaccinated and the guards are going unvaccinated and unmasked. Uh, yes. That's a hell, uh, hell of a... <laughs> that's 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 an interesting you know so so what is it that you think you're saying well what is it that you're saying by that or what do you think that that i mean what is that what is that reflective of because i heard you discuss this uh with dr fernandez the other day uh um uh i, I get it slightly differently but i but i'm interested in what you what you're what you're what you know what you're attempting to say or what is being said by that yeah well the, the 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 unfairness the injustice of allowing the guards to be vaccinated as they please or mm -hmm. not and the fact that prisoners are pressured into vaccination by letting them know that if they do not submit, they will go into solitary confinement, which by the way, is the new normal for them anyway, whenever they test positive, mm. is a lethal double bind for the prisoners because the, pris the guards bring the virus in there. The prisoners don't bring the virus in. They're in prison. They don't invent the virus. It's the guards who bring the virus in. And the prisoners, I'm sorry to use this image, but I love ducks. I'm an animal lover, so don't take it badly. But the prisoners are sitting ducks. And so to answer another question you put, Jared, because time is so much of the essence uh, with the United States now, since the 26th of August, being the leader in the world for deaths, for Delta deaths, even compared to third world countries. Well, of course, you know, America loves being leader. So why not be leader in Delta deaths, right? But this is a moment in our history where we have to take a stand and if we have to go to the United Nations because legality is too long, litigating the appeals of our prisoners takes too long and they're dying meanwhile. Their prognosis is guarded like Mumia had congested heart failure. And we're being told, oh, no, wait, he still has appeals that will go to the various courts, but it will take time. But he has no lifetime. Legal time and lifetime don't equate. And that's what is not recognized. And that's what Dr. Ricardo Alvarez 
uh, Mumia's chosen medical consultant calls elder abuse. They have no time. Yeah, sorry. Mm. No, I was just going to ask what 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 else was specifically so so to tell us about this report that that came out of the UN. What 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 did they, who who did it? What what did they find? Yeah, uh, and of course, question. specifically, what how does it relate to to uh, what's happening with Mumia? Yeah, let um, me tell you. Um, okay, what is the document? The letter was dated 9th of April, twenty twenty one. It was addressed to the U.S. Ambassador Permanent Representative to the U.N. in Geneva. It's seven pages long. It was available to the public 60 days later. That is to say on June 9th. And it importantly asked for a response. And I'll tell you in a few minutes what replies it requested but to answer your question jared these were the signatories the chairperson of the working group of experts on people of african descent she is remarkable she's uh, an african of african descent herself the special rapporteur on the rights of persons with disabilities, the special rapporteur on the right of everyone to the enjoyment of the highest attainable, attainable standard of physical and mental health, independent expert on the enjoyment of human rights by older persons, that's very important, elder abuse, and special rapporteur on torture and other cruel, inhuman, or degradating treatment or punishment. And um, I'll tell you what I think the most important part of this seven-page document is. Um, it, uh, it states its main concern, and I'm reading from it, about Mumia Abu Jamal's physical integrity in contravention to his right to life. Elsewhere, the document says that the medical condition of Mumia Abu Jamal is linked to years of medical neglect by the Department of Corrections. And then, to my mind, this is the key quote. Now, this is to my mind. Maybe other people would have other takeaways. So please allow me to read it, and I'll try to unpack it. We would like also to of the International Covenant Did she freeze again? Right to life. In its general comment number 36, the Human Rights Committee clarifies that the obligation of states to respect uh, um, I have at least pulled up here uh, a summary of the statement that she's reading from or attempting to read from right. uh, which was published here uh, on the U UN Human Rights uh, um, website. We'll put the link in the show notes to this to this program. Uh, but it's specific to the shackling of aged inmate Mumia Abu Jamal, which they describe as deplorable. Uh, and then, as she was saying, it does say here: we are concerned that the medical condition of Mr. Abu Jamal could be linked to years of medical neglect by the Department of Corrections of the State of Pennsylvania. 
The situation may also be the result of racial discrimination against people of African descent by prison and state authorities, end quote. Um, so, uh, Mama Julia, we were just trying to read quickly from uh, at least a summary of the report that, that you were talking about. Uh, uh, but uh, if you want to pick up where you left off, please, please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So uh, they're saying that there's not only a right to life, but there's a duty to ensure that this right extends to reasonably foreseeable threats. Now, this is very important. States parties may be in violation of Article 6, even if such threats and situations Yes. Yeah. Pro Hold on. Um, yeah, Mama Julia, we've lost you again on that. We, we, we'd have to... Can, let me, hold on. Can... Um, we lost you on that bit. Can you read that last yes. part again? Thanks. Yes. So, uh, they, Article 6 asks not only for the right to life, which, by the way, is ironical, if you allow me to say, because he's sentenced to life. Right. But his right to life is being challenged. Okay. <laughs> so, that's not enough the letter says, the document says, but the DOC has a duty to foresee threats and life-threatening situations that can result in the loss of life. States parties may be in violation of Article 6 even if such threats and situations do not result in loss of life. Well, to me, that means don't wait till he dies. The crime is before. The crime sure. is in not being proactive. I mean... <laughs> The UN is as radical as it can get here. So what I'm thinking in terms of what we can do with such a letter, they have all the timeline of uh, Mumia's medical ordeal absolutely right. I don't know how they got a hold of it, but they did. Uh, they've got his medical narrative right at last. So it's a solid document as far as that goes. Uh, and here are a few of the things that I think we can do with that document. And then I'll tell you the elephant in the room, which I think you can guess now because you know where I'm going. Um, one, we can let our elders, our elderly political prisoners especially, know about this document. It will boost their morale, And that will be important to them. Two, we can challenge the Pennsylvania uh, DOC uh, with the document. And there's nothing like letting uh, watchers letting know they're being watched. <laughs> They get paranoid. I love mm. open letters. I wrote a number mm. of them to um, uh, 
uh, Mumia's prosecutor, <laughs> because when you read an open letter on that's addressed to you, you know thousands or millions of people are reading over your shoulder. So you get pretty paranoid. Uh, three, the letter constitutes a blueprint for letters that can be written for every one of our prisoners. And here's what people can do. All they have to do is file a special procedures report with the United Nations in the name of the prisoner they want to defend and protect. And that's how the document on Mumia came through. Uh, another point is that many passages in this letter can be extrapolated to the situation of all the incarcerated elders. There are statistics on all incarcerated elders in Pennsylvania. But the last point is the one I wanted to get to. And that is that the letter was written on 9th of April. The UN usually gives the, the government that is it has addressed the letter to two months to respond. That was June 9th. June 9th has come and gone. And today is September 1st. And Biden's government is still silent. And we're coming back to that question of silence that we began this show with. Are we going to allow the silence that kills us to continue? It, it's, um, you know, it, it's so many things connected to this. Um, one, uh, you know, for the listeners and viewers, it's important to recognize that um, as, as organizers, you know, you know, they say that we utilize all tools, you know what I mean? Because of the fact that, you know, many of us would say that, of course, that the United Nations is like a, a toothless tiger. However, <laughs> the document itself is still a tool that can be utilized. Right. Um, I, I wanted to, uh, you know, one of the things that we have to remember is that Mumia was a talented writer and and part of his silencing was the fact that he was a journalist who was really um, on the case in regards to what was going on with the move organization. Your father, uh, Richard Wright, of course, one of our most talented writers. Again, um, he also was a target. The FBI, you know, had documents on him. The FBI had uh, over 200 something pages of, uh, you know, in their files on him. And I understand that, um, you know, I, I heard in another interview where he was talking about, um, he was talking to his friend Ali, I believe, about uh, the place in Paris being uh, monitored and tapped. Can you speak to that? Yeah. Because of the fact that I don't think that people realize the importance of the uh, as Che Guevara said, the role of the um, as the uh, the propagandist is just as important as the role of the guerrilla. Um, why would you say that uh, they targeted your father and you know Mumia and and you know the James Baldwin's and so on and so forth? What would be your uh, your take on that? Uh, I thank you for your question. I think that's a very deep question and we will, I'm not finished answering it. It goes very, we have to form groups and study it. 
We can hear you. you, you you're you're here. From- yes. Yeah, you're there. Yeah, you're- yes. Yes. So, you know what? There is a real paradox that comes to mind. There is a list of reparations all sorts of reparations that are being asked for nowadays. I would like to add one to that list. And Jared, it will be on your show that I shall air it for the first time. I've been hesitating to add that that request, but I will make it now because as we know, we don't know how much. Oh. Mama Julia, I you're freezing like up real quick. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, go ahead. Okay, let's try again. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, damn. <laughs> All right, let's try again, and we'll make sure uh, uh, that that uh, Mama Julia is is clear that uh, while she is always welcome to my particular show, that that uh, it's the platform uh, that is welcoming her. Uh, uh, so I just want to make sure you know, Mama Julia, you're always welcome to my particular show, but it is the platform that welcomes you now uh, and is, is made special uh, uh, occasion for your visit. So it, it's the platform that would welcome whatever you would want to break with us at whatever point you're ready. Uh, yes, but go ahead, anytime. please continue. Yeah. So uh, I would love to ask for all the tapes of the bugs throughout the decades of our fathers and ancestors, the gems of their wisdom, the speeches, the conversations between them, we never got to hear because the doors were closed. But the FBI and the CIA heard them. They belong to us. Right on. Get back to us. Hey. And that, yeah. And that will go a long way to end the silence. Hmm. You know, first of all, that we're happy to support anything that 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 we can. Uh, uh, to 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 support your endeavors. Uh, you know, for sure, and and um, uh. Having heard, having had the privilege of hearing some of the archived uh, uh, FBI tapes on Robert Williams broadcasts, uh, I would love to hear uh, more. I thought that was fascinating to 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 listen in on them listening in to to, to Robert Williams and Mabel Williams broadcast uh, Radio Free Dixie, but I would love to 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 help. Uh, get these audio files for mama julia um and hopefully we can get her back because there's there was there's at least one other piece that i would want to raise with her that that fits within all of this you know he wrote um that is her father richard wrote uh the poem uh the fbi blues and uh which was the um uh which is the sort of the inspiration for uh the title of a book that um you know i've been you know working back and forth you know from for a number of years now uh that where he is discussed a lot and i'm just going to share it real quick just to show it but but this book here uh how j edgar hoover's ghost writers framed african-american literature fbis um and and mama julia I, I this was something that i was uh at some point i don't know if we have time or the ability today given our connection and and, and the focus elsewhere but this was something i definitely wanted to ask you about at some point uh uh and we're happy to have you back whenever it is is convenient because um your father was one of many writers that the fbi attempted if i if i understand it correctly to mimic in their own attempts to falsely produce uh, statements, literature, journalism, even other writing 
uh, that purported to be from the black literary world and targeting the black community, uh, but obviously meant to direct uh, uh, that audience in a, in a different direction. So, um, but uh, uh, anyway, I'm not sure exactly where you were, but I wanted to let you finish the thought you were tempted to, to get out just a minute ago. Um, and then if, if not, I'm definitely happy to come back to that. Um, that, that was it. I think we just keep coming, cycling back to silence. I mean, okay. we're going to have to tackle that, tackle that. Um, uh, uh, break it and also deal with black silence how fear uh, created silent, would have created silence in my father, how his mother smacked him into silence, how, how black fear creates black silence. Um, but, but there's so much there. Anyway, uh, to get back to the UN document, uh, um, COVID has introduced a new um, outlook on time. What, what sort of time do we have in store? And uh, we, we need to make good use of that time. So mm. my feeling is, yes, I agree. Uh, use all the doors that we can pry open at all levels use all the contradictions within the enemy's ranks included they're falling apart by the way so why not uh uh, uh yeah Um, speak up. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think he just froze there a little so bit. Getting yeah. back to FBI's. Go ahead. We can at least hear you. Yeah. Go ahead. We hear you. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the pattern. Yeah. Go ahead. Back to mm -hmm. FBI's. Um, I did order the book, but never got it because I'm mm. on an island very far away. Um, and, uh, but found out something very extraordinary. I think that is contained in that book, but I'm not surprised. And that is J. Edgar Hoover You notice whenever we talk about the FBI, things are freezing around here. I was going to say, I was going to say pattern there's a pattern for sure uh serious pattern you, you ask certain it's questions it's like whoop the internet she was about up. to drop something she was about to drop something good on it uh i mean yeah. the the uh, admittedly uh i didn't have a chance to prepare uh enough for this this interview for at least this particular this question uh, and I'm happy to hear you continue on with that story, but, but because your father, uh, I, you know, I think makes sense, figures prominently in, in that book, uh, FBI's, uh, that, that uh, um, uh, and in fact, at one point, Hoover was was accusing, um, uh, I believe it's a uh, black boy of, or, or was it native son? I'm not really, I, honestly, I can't remember which one, but he was accusing your father's writings of working in favor of the Nazis because it depicted such a negative, uh, you know, view of the United States <laughs> that he was, they were attempted to say. So it's like, <laughs> so I'm saying if, if, if Richard Wright can write about the United States and you feel like it makes you look bad vis-a-vis -vis the Nazis, I mean, that says more about you, I would think, than than whatever he's writing. Uh, uh, but uh, I thought that was funny to note in, in that book that, that that was definitely one of the concerns of Hoover. But please uh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, I wish I had read the book. Uh, I found out from somebody who did read it that Hoover has the biggest, richest, best researched library 
of Black, of African American literature and other psychology, etc., books in the United States and the world. He had them. By the way, another reparation demand. We want those books. They belong to us. They're our brain mm. power. Where are they? Mm. Right on. Um, now, yeah, Hoover was obsessed with my father, like he was obsessed with a lot of other black men. But I think it was a projection. He was obsessed with his own blackness mm. that he was hiding to the world. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. I can see that. He, <laughs> he, he didn't come out of his closet. He should have. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, so, so, yeah, I mean, that's the rumor. I mean, I honestly, I've never followed up on that, but but that's been one of the rumored uh, uh, that he spent, you know, of, of the several closets that he was in, that that was certainly one of them. And uh, uh, so that, I mean, it, it stands to reason. Uh, and, and, and just to, you know, just pulling up my Kindle copy of that book right now, there's over 300 references to your father in the book, just doing wow. a search for his name. So, uh, and a lot of it is because when you when you and, and again, uh, admittedly, I'm not prepared for this part. You know, I didn't come prepared with this, but just looking through it again, when you read your father's name, uh, one of the reasons why it's so clear that he was a problem for for uh, Hoover is that in all in, on, on almost all these pages are other references to something like communism, Marxism, Kwame Nkrumah, Pan-Africanism, Lenin, you know, there's all, so it's like you could just see this, this sort of the, the collage of horrors that would have been presented to, to Hoover, uh, uh, just, just directly and indirectly from your father. But, uh, um, uh, uh, but anyway, yeah. How, 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 um, how, how much of a role do you think that, um, you know, and I know this might sound like a silly question to me, the whole um, relationship to the Communist Party USA you know, him being a former member and still having, you know, um, tight connections, his best friend being a member, so on and so forth. How much of a um, an issue uh, do you think that was on the whole surveillance piece? I mean, it was it was bad enough that he was, you know, had the audacity to to speak black in the 40s and to, to star in a film that he wrote. I, I think that, um, you know, that's one of the things that people don't look at. I mean, I mean, he was like, I, I, I don't want to say ahead of his time, but I mean, certainly he was, you know, I mean, just on that whole communist situation, how do, how do you think that? Uh, yeah, uh, my thoughts, and of course, I'm a red diaper baby, so I'm marked forever, <laughs> however long that forever will be, but I'm a, a how do you say, there won't be any more red diaper babies. Uh, mm. but that's interesting. Once a communist, always a communist. That is American history. Mm. He was branded. He had left, but he was branded. His friends, whoever he befriended, whoever he loved, uh, whatever he wrote was branded. His children were called red diaper babies. Um, that's America for you. Um, so yes. And then when he turns to Pan-Africanism, and uh oh perfect timing again when he turned to pan africanism uh Keywords. one one point <laughs> one point that 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 one point mama julia that's made in 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 this book fbis is that uh to your to your point about once branded uh, when he left, according to, when he left the Communist Party, according to to, to Hoover, uh, it was because he was part of an even more left radical fringe that thought the communists weren't revolutionary enough. 
So it wasn't as if, you know, let me let me resign and I can maybe right. not that he was doing this, but, but it wasn't that anybody could resign and say, let me let me prove my loyalty to the to the state again. It was that now nah, if you resign it's because you were on that more radical fringe left uh, uh, that 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 he accused uh, her father of being a part of. Um, uh, anyway, I, I want to get back. I got to get back into that book because just looking at some of my notes in 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 my Kindle copy, there's some interesting things. You know where they even talk about the um, you know famous uh, uh, white writers like Norman Mailer and William Styron uh, being and other hipply liberal Democratic Party linked novelists of the 1950s and 60s were not only professional dissimulators. Uh, then attracted to Mitchell C's second skin. So there's even some hate on on these more popular white writers who were themselves trying to mimic uh, the, the the blackness of the time, uh, apparently, at least according anyway. Uh, Mama Julia, let me let me just just if, if we can, let me just make sure you you get in any concluding comments or thoughts that you want for today's discussion. Uh, and then we will definitely uh, want to schedule something again. Uh, um, uh, maybe we can help you get you a copy of this FBI's uh, book and then we can have you back for a discussion of that because I think that'd be fascinating too. But but um, uh, any concluding remarks that we want to make sure you get or, or emphasize or reiterate before uh, uh, we either lose you again or have to wrap up uh, ourselves? Um, I think that the days ahead for abolitionists in the United States and everywhere are going to be very trying because um, the prisons, we are struggling to defund, are becoming tinderboxes because of the Delta variants. But of the other variants arriving. And this all because of the mismanagement of the capitalist corrupt mismanagement of a pandemic that You're here. You're here. That target, as usual, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. You're still with us. Mm. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. We'll, we'll, uh, see if we can get her. She's looking to come right back here. Um, let's see, go ahead. We, we have you yeah, back. Just saying in the closing that the pandemic is targeting us, the former slaves, the Southern states, the ethnic minority prisoners, those who have no rights to speak of, but who were forced into guilt, prefabricated guilt. And as things have shown up till now, these are the people, the wretched of the poisoned earth, because we have environmental racism to deal with and the climate change. These are the people who are going to die first, who are dying first. So it's another massacre. Mm. Well, uh, 
Kalanji, unless you got something, I just, I, you know, I want to, I just want to, you know, extend our gratitude uh, to you, Mama Julia, and uh, uh, invite you uh, again to come back for more discussion of, of, of all of this and your work and that of your father. Uh, and I definitely want to stay in touch with you um, because I, now we, I'm looking just through some of my notes in that FBI's book uh and 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 we have to have this conversation <laughs> i mean it's, it's, I, I i i gotta get you to read this so if 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 we need to send you another copy i'll, I'll communicate offline and see if we can't get you uh i don't know if you read digital copies but we need to one way or another okay. we need to get you something because uh i think you would I, i'm i'm now just selfishly fascinated to know what you would think of what's being said here uh, um, and what you would be able to do with what's being said here. But uh, uh, personally, I just want to thank you very much for coming through and I uh, uh, appreciate the work you're doing. Uh, Kalanji, my bad. I didn't want to. Nah, I mean, you and, know, and I think you, she might be frozen again. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I mean, definitely if she can hear uh, and when she does hear, you know, I think that uh, I can say we're absolutely grateful for um as our enemy would say, thank you for your service because of the fact that, you know, it, it's not, I'm, I'm happy that you understand the importance of continuing this fight because of the fact that so often we're disconnected from, um, from our lineage, from our fighters. And we're, we're that fear you talked about sort of forces us into um, the, the, the silence that we don't need. We're silent at the wrong time. You know what I mean? So definitely, you know, grateful for your your contributions and, and sharing with us and with our audience. You know, definitely, um, you. you know, an awesome experience. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to more. So, you, you know, it's you. not time to lead the front line yet. You, you'll stick around for at least another 80 or so years because uh, we're in need. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will send both of you. Uh, a petition I wrote on ethnic massacres. If mm -hmm. you would be willing to sign it, absolutely. Hey, okay. Got my pen ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, okay. That was okay. I think. Well, I think uh, technology has for us exited our guest, uh, but I just want to thank again, uh, yes. as you said, whether she hears it now or later, thank again, Mama Julia Wright for coming through and sharing with us a little bit about her father, about this 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 newly published book, uh, The Man Who Lived Underground, uh, that was, uh, you know, censored some, I don't know, what is this, 70, 80 years ago now? Yeah, going on uh, 80 years, yeah. 80 years next year. Um, yeah, man, that that's that's bananas. That here it is. This is a piece that literally people have come and gone since he wrote this piece. Right. You know what I mean? And right. And it's just being unearthed or introduced, you know, to the to the masses. And the timing is just incredible. You know what I mean? It's right. just incredible right now. So. You know, definitely give thanks to that. I think that um, one thing that would be good for folks, too, is to go back and study Richard Wright's uh, childhood and what what uh, what 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 were the uh, the uh, what came before him? What what created the, mm. the conditions that created Richard Wright? You're talking about uh, a man whose grandparents on both sides were born into slavery. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so it's not, you know, when you talk about, and I'm saying that because of the fact that here it is, we're talking to her daughter, I mean, excuse me, to his daughter, who, you know, we know that he knew his grandparents who were, you know, actually born as slaves, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or born as enslaved Africans. So mm -hmm. it's just incredible because of the fact that I think that we often need to be reminded, you know, they talk about our enslavement and our captivity like it was so long ago, you know what I mean? Like, like that was the past and, and you know what I mean? And it's, it's just ridiculous, but uh, definitely I'm looking forward to uh, digging into the man uh, who lived underground. Absolutely. I just wanted to pull this up since we mentioned it. And this is, this is the, the, you know, the, the poem that, that sparked not only the title of that book we were talking about, but, but uh, so much of this conversation, you know, just the, 
uh, uh, that Richard Wright writing in 1949, uh, something that would later evolve. I mean, again, so we, even when we've talked about here in the context of Black August, the counterintelligence program was maybe a, a specifically named program uh, of the mid to late 60s, but it has its antecedents. It, it, it you know, Hoover obviously was long in play, uh, even at the point that that Wright writes this poem. So. Uh, and every, it's just like he says, you know, everywhere I look, I see FBI's said every place I look, Lord, I find FBI's uh, I'm getting sick and tired of government spies. Uh, and this is, you know, this is at that point. Uh, you Who know, thought so, you were going to so, read it, man. Don't, don't, don't be fronting now. Man. Oh, I wasn't going to try to read the whole thing. I wasn't, you know, I, yeah, I it's you know, liners, uh, man. Chill. Where, <laughs> That old FBI tied a bell to my bed stall, said old FBI tied a bed bell to my bed stall. Each time I love my baby, government knows it all. Woke up this morning, FBI under my bed, said I woke up this morning, FBI under my bed, told me all, told me all I dressed, la dr told me all I dreamed last night. Every word I said, everywhere I look, Lord, I see FBI's, said every place I look, Lord, I find FBI's. I'm sick and I'm sick. I'm getting sick and tired of government spies. Man, listen, so. that that and, and it, it's that little piece is so real because when you talk about, like you said, COINTELPRO, and you talk about the 60s and the 50s, late 50s, and all of that, you know, Jagger Hoover got his start in like the 1917, 18s, and whatnot. That's you right. talk about right around World War One. You know what I mean? So he's been wreaking havoc and hell on our people from Garvey to the Panther Party and beyond. You know what I'm saying? We still feeling the lasting effects. Everybody black, everybody communist, everybody, anybody that 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 thought or looked like they was thinking about uh, having disdain for this oppressive regime. They, he he was on it. You know what I mean? So. I mean, man, when she talked about that library, him having the largest and the richest black library, he probably studied more Africans than any Africans you know. You know what I'm saying? To be, Absolutely. To be, I mean, look, I mean, you know, again, uh, uh, you know, and 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 uh, you know, and to the to the well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and what the point I was getting at was that, you know, every time you, I just look through this book again and I just see every time his name comes up, he's listed on a page with somebody else that they didn't like. And, and they were definitely worried about uh, uh, his his affinity for Nkrumah and and, you know, moving in that whole, you know, uh, yeah. uh, it's it's so it's crazy. Um, uh, I did want to man, I think I just lost my point, but but that's anyway, that's that's enough of a point to make. Uh, so I just, I, you know, again, I appreciate Mama Julia for coming out um, and and uh, uh, obviously appreciate getting the co-host this special with you as we hold it down for the remix crew and the Boom Bap Breakfast, yeah. which will be back uh, next week. Um, uh, we might have something special tomorrow morning, uh, so stay tuned. You never know what's coming around these parts. Uh, Stick and, around. Uh, yeah. And, and then Stick I'll be around. <laughs> And I'll be dragging Brother Kaba back in here on Friday morning. Uh, and uh, no uh, good of himself. No, yes. no good of himself. You talk about, you know, uh, the, the cultural wing of the FBI's putting eyes on us <laughs> to many. You know, I know he just, I know he's attracted a few. Uh, and uh, so eyes on, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, on Friday and Monday, you, you sing it Donnie Hathaway like he did on our, our, our uh, Black August special. Yeah, man. I hate to give him credit, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you gotta, just, I, I know it's terrible to uh, have to do it, right? Man, it's terrible. It's just one shout, of the many countries. Let me just shout know. out Sonny and I'm gonna say Sonny and the other guy. Shout out to Sonny Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> and mama and mama Ayana. No and doubt. Dr. Chris guy, Strong and, and, and the other said, uh, other guy that was singing. He, yeah. He, yeah, he was singing something. No but, doubt. Uh, uh, we'll be dragging him in on Friday, and then I'll, and then I'll be back on Monday. But then it, we'll be remixing for sure uh, uh, next week. So next Tuesday is the blues. Uh, in fact, I might have a riot starter TV on the drop. You know what I mean? Uh, probably. I, mean. Uh, I don't know Thursday, Friday, something. I'll let y'all know. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we saying. Have, you uh, never know. Yeah, because we 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 had Black August, but we can't forget the Attica rebellions coming up. You know what I mean? Now, so in fact, th there's th that's a good point. We have um, well, a couple things we've had for a couple weeks now, uh, actually a couple of months, 
uh, the Black Lash Collective, which is, uh, you know, another uh, crew I work with that's associated with us here, BPM, is going to be uh, hosting uh, Dr. Tommy Curry on September 9th for nice. a discussion of Black masculinity. Uh, and I know that we're also endeavoring to connect that discussion uh, and maybe with some other guests that day or maybe uh, around that time who uh, uh, participated in the Attica uh, uprising. So yes. there are some survivors that we're in touch with that that yeah. we're looking to bring back through as well. So so that's why I'm saying click the bell. That's why, you know, I'm going to put it up there again. You got to click that bell. It's, Man, you listen, should join. You should like, you should subscribe, but you got to click that bell because because you never know what's coming. We have some stuff that's relatively scheduled, but you never know. And you, if you click that bell, you get that that notification. Be like, come on through. You know what I mean? You got a riot starter. You never know what's nah, coming. Me. Nah, Man, listen, me. Nah, <laughs> me. Listen, listen, listen. And, and, and for, our, for our viewers, man, we so appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Yes, you. You know what I mean? For rocking with us because of the fact that, you know, you are inspiration and motivation. And that's real. We don't, I mean... I don't know about Dr. Jed Ball, but me just getting up talking in front of a damn laptop with a microphone is is weird to me. However, you know what I'm saying? We we want to make sure that we we bring that proper information and uh definitely salute to you, Jed, for um, you know, for bringing on Mama Julia. I think that was definitely, you know, that, that was a powerful uh powerful piece. Hey, this is the extended crew we work with. As I said at the beginning, Dr. Todd Stephen Burroughs had me yes. in an email exchange going back a few months now. Uh, okay. Dr. Johanna Fernandez, who I know you've brought on here uh, yeah. and we're looking to have back uh, uh, as soon as she can. You know, it, it's that they were doing, you know, so I, of course, just said, of course, <laughs> of course, I mean, we would host you. You know what I mean? What are we why, doing why, here? We're willing to do that. What exactly. type of man so, would you be? You know what, what, kind, what type of man too. would I be? What's wrong with exactly? So man. it was a no brainer. And of course, we we uh, uh, want to offer as much of a boom bat breakfast as we can because I know when the remix is not around, even as a consumer, there's something yeah. missing. Uh, yeah, and you know your media diet. You know that 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 piece that 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 scrumptious meal you've been waiting for yes. is missing. Yes. And, so, and, and, and I know they've been sitting back like we we miss Kalanji. It's just something about a brother. We just miss the riot starter. I know. I hear y'all. See our food's in effect. Shout out to all the brothers and sisters that uh, that that did hit the inbox and was asking about where the remix was and all that type of stuff. Right, I didn't right. get to answer a lot of folks, but we right. will be back on Tuesday. You know what I mean? This this right here, and then um, I mix what I like on Friday. Uh, riot That's starter right. TV. We'll we'll hold it down to then. We'll give you enough stuff. And on Saturday, we can't forget we have um, Warrior Class. Man, listen, and I'm 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 back in class now, so I'm ready to ready oh, to run. Right on. I'm ready. And to some days too with the ear doctor, man. Like you can't like like we yes. we, we, we we still we, we you know it's still happening. Uh, yeah, don't don't uh, don't so, get you know, don't you get suspicious. You know what I mean? Suspicious. Make sure y'all we we need that that marketing promotions though. You know what I'm saying? Our marketing budget is quite low, so we need mm -hmm. you, yes you, to share this. You know what I'm saying? So like we gotta tweet. take it back to the old days of the street team. Man, listen here. You know what the street team was about? We sniping, spraying the, the, the glue on the joint and slapping it on the walls on the side of the buses. The whole night, they don't know nothing about that right there. Don't know that about that. I, I used to walk around, school. I used to walk around this big bag with like 10,000 <laughs> eight by 10, eight and a half by 11 flyers, posting them up all over the city, whatever. Old it's school social joint. media, man. man uh, it's, 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 it was no joke. You had to wear them <laughs> those soles out on them shoes, man. Man, you know, listen. Working, man. And if you lived up north and you was rocking them Timberlands and them hoodies and whatnot, it can get quite hot. <laughs> get quite hot. Hey man, hey man and, and, and Timberlands are not comfortable walking shoes. Uh, hey man. So, so uh, like, those, like those are chill like, shoes, man, or work shoes. Yeah, yeah. Like chill and but but if you gotta move, uh, they were not the thing, man. Uh, nice, man. You know, so like you know, shout out to all them cats that got in fights with baggy jeans and Tim's on. I don't know how they did. Hey, I, I was I was him. <laughs> Yo, you but while you in the middle of the rumble, you know what I'm saying you gotta play it off. But when you get home and take the mugs off, Ooh. like cloud have mercy. <laughs> Forget the fight. <laughs> them hooks be howling. 
<laughs> that's as close as I've ever come to understand when I see sisters talk about you don't understand what these heels are doing to my feet. Man, you know, I'm I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, get, I'm taking one for the team, trying to look good out I here. <laughs> part, part of the fight, I gotta, you know, mess my feet up. I gotta kick and stomp you. At least I feel like, you know, like, like it was worth that that it battle, was worth that pain. Yeah. Now, with police chasing you, have to jump out of some shit, and you hitting them, them, them soles are so hard. Good God Almighty, boy. Yeah, I did. I was never running. I was never running from the police in that moment. But I do have. I do know what that. I do know what it mean when you jump down on, in the tent. It's not. It's not the shoe. It's not. The, it's not the shoe for that. So you Man. gotta. You know. That's why you gotta. Definitely. You gotta plan in advance if you know what you're gonna get into. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you black in America, you're a moving target anyway. It's it's shit. So and, you know, it, it happens like that. Anyway, shout out to the tree line streets. Absolutely. We only had to shout out to, to these rough. tree line streets. It's rough out here, man. That people don't know. And look again, thanks everybody for coming through the remixers, uh, uh, the BPM folks. Uh, no uh, shout out to those who were shouting out BTAC as well. BTAC is coming back as well. Uh, well, September 9th, most notably, right here on BPM. So, um, uh, thanks to everybody. Big shout out to Mama Julia, of course. Rest in power to her father. And we appreciate yes. this work. We look forward to getting into it. So my man Kalanji, like Fred used to say, man, peace if you're willing to fight for it. And I know you are. So peace to you and everybody out there. We'll catch you next time here on Black Power Media, everybody. Black Owl.